Hey everyone, it's your Sally Coach and this will be episode one on my course to experimental design and we will be going through each and every single section of the experimental design test but in this video specifically I will give you a brief introduction on what this event is about. So let's get started. All right, so let's first talk about the event setup. What is the event setup, right? So this is going to be the process of what you're going to be seeing before, during, and after you get to the experiment. This could be in person or um, on an online invitational, but we're just going to go through what's going to happen. So when you get there, you're first going to see this one packet. That packet will have information on a certain topic and also some materials. And when you get there, those materials are going to be what you're going to be having to use inside the test. Along with the materials back to the topic, this topic statement will be some type of theory. So some examples of this would be like capillary action or maybe like friction, um, aviation, which we're going to be doing in this experiment and more. This could be like Newton's laws, physics, torque, tension. There's many, many, many different types of theories. So a little bit of studying you need to do before this event is to figure out some important terminology and some uh, different types of words to use because some of these topics that they give you are just completely out of nowhere and you may not know what exactly they're talking about based on your level of scientific knowledge. Like if you are in Division B watching this, you may not know exactly what some of these topics are. So I suggest that you watch some videos, learn about some more science rules and more on. So before you get there, you're allowed to bring a stopwatch, a measurement device and a calculator. So this stopwatch, right? So this stopwatch is used to just calculate any time. This could be used whenever you're dealing with like density or buoyancy, maybe some type of drop with the ball. And you're also allowed to bring a measurement device and calculator. Now I said measurement device because there are hundreds of different things that you can bring. Um, I know my team bring a meter stick, which was a really, really big problem because we had to calculate circumference. So instead, of doing um, a meter stick or something and having to do unnecessary calculations when you get there, bring something that's really big, you know? I like to bring some tailor's measuring tape. So if you go to like a tailor that measures your clothes and stuff, they have a long string of measuring tape, which is very useful. You can wrap it around whatever you need. You can really calculate circumference fast and it's extremely useful. So bring some type of like flexible measuring tape and not one of those really hard ones. And lastly, a calculator. You can check in your um, year's experimental design, but I believe when this is posted, you can bring a class two calculator. So this cannot be graphing and it can only be just simple uh, types of math terms like square root, all of that. Um, and lastly, one thing I wanna say is to look at your environment. So you won't be able to see your material as soon as you get there. You, you will see like your materials, but you won't see your topic. So when you get your materials, I want you to look around and figure out what they could relate to. So if you have magnetic things, you may look and see, oh, there's some magnets in my, um, you know, area. Or if you have something with like balls or something, right? You may think about how different textures and different environments may roll differently with the ball, right? So I want you to look around your environment to figure out what type of different textures and heights you're working with. Now let's get on to the rules. Okay, so some rules you need to keep in mind is that you have to use two materials. In some events, you may think like, oh, since it's just throwing a paper airplane, right? We might as well just only use one. But you have to use two materials all the time. And the stopwatch, the calculator, the meter stick, those don't count as uh, materials. So also keep that in mind. Next, your area needs to be cleaned up after you finish your experiment. Now, you won't have any extra time after the experiment to clean up. So within the 50 minutes you have be inside of the test, you need to clean up and leave, I'd say a minute or two of time so that you have time to clean up and stack your papers organized so that they don't take off points for that. And for more information, definitely, definitely, definitely check with the uh, event supervisor that's in the room with you before you start the test so that you know exactly how to get max points. Next, make sure to keep your experiment exactly related to the topic because without this, you get a 0.75% uh, like negative penalty, meaning that your whatever score that you would have gotten, you would have gone like a 100%, right? That would instantly go down to a 75%. So it's really important to not drift away from the topic and you have to stay exactly on the topic. If it's asking you to like compare two different variables during your experiment, you have to compare those two. 
it's extremely important to read through exactly what the topic is telling you to so that you don't make these mistakes. And one last thing is that you must complete your experiment thoroughly without cheating or like using some loopholes because that pretty much gets you disqualified. It will also give you like a rank and ranks are not good. It's like a tier. Tier is when you get like lower than literally everyone else. So please don't try cheating out of your experiment because they will know no matter what. So that's going to be the end of our introduction episode and I'll get you on with the next one. Thank you for listening.